Hello kids with Longevity Lifestyle Designers, this is Govan here with Secrets of Longevity.com. You probably saw my recent video right before this one on the topic of IQ and heredity as well as uh, how IQ develops as a society develops out of uh, sort of the hunter-gatherer type phase to the agricultural to uh, obviously then a more developed society. One can be critical of obviously developed societies and the problems that they bring about, but one thing is that I found in doing the research for that was that as IQ increases that is a major benefit to humanity at large and it's not something that we should really, uh, if we're talking about the benefits of the past, try to um, forget about in terms of um, trying to get better health and better life overall for everyone that chooses to explore these things. Uh, one thing that comes to mind, a lot of people would have seen this, is that famous meme, I'll stick it up here actually. Um, and it's the walking forwards evolutionary time scale and then there's that modern man turning around and saying we screwed up and we're going back. Uh, I disagree with that, that this mentality that I think a lot of people have of we need to start going back and we can't keep progressing is not very accurate. I mean we obviously can improve by getting things from the past especially when it comes to lifestyle but this anti-human, anti-progress, anti-where-we're-going mindset is uh, limiting, in my opinion. Uh, so another thing I wanted to emphasize in this video was more around lifespan and how that's correlated quite strongly with IQ. Uh, and even when you control for one of the major things that people would obviously have come to mind is socioeconomic status. It still comes out that higher IQ regardless of how much you make in your lifetime uh, is quite tied in with long life. So right off the bat we can just theorize that that's likely from just simply being able to make better choices and as I suggested in my past video you also have a better ability to foresee and predict the future through what it is you're seeing around you and make wiser decisions as a result. So one example is if the country you're living in is on the fritz, you might make the choice to immigrate. And it was shown in the past video that uh, people who immigrated were more likely to be of a higher IQ than the average population of the country they were leaving. And that's if we're not talking about refugees, but just immigration on one's own whim before there's any cataclysmic event that would basically force people out. Because uh, people will escape danger when it's right on their doorstep, but when they can't predict it, uh, several years down the road, um, the higher IQ people will and they'll essentially leave. So even though it was just my previous video, I'll stick a link for it below, that's link number one. Any reference I make will be numbered and I'll mention the number in the video and you can just find that in the drop down menu below. Uh, link number two is a Wikipedia article called Cognitive Epidemiology. So this is looking at literally IQ results and other tests and factors of intelligence and cognitive ability and tying that in with health factors. And this really sums up quite well the variance in uh, these different controls that were done in different studies. And they're all linked to that. I mean, some people will criticize a Wikipedia article when what you have to criticize is the links within the Wikipedia article. So there can be tampering to Wikipedia articles, but if there's a medical study linked, it's a medical study and it's just a convenient way of having a whole slew of studies in one spot that uh, really sums up the topic nicely. Another major thing we can understand um, is one of the major predictors of IQ and long life or morbidity is uh, the rate of abuse in childhood because a lot of these IQ studies are done at a certain point in childhood and if there had been abuse beforehand that obviously can detract from IQ and that can cause problems down the road in one's lifespan. And link number three is another video I did in the recent past looking at a study that came out um, that said there's a, an extreme scale of very minor abuse in childhood or in life going to the very extreme of horrendous abuse of all types perhaps and you can have essentially almost up to 20 years of your life taken off by how much abuse you might have suffered. There's obviously ways you can work through that through counseling and various therapies but if not, these things can be detrimental to one's long-term health. So 
what also happens with abuse, and I touched on that in the previous video on IQ, is that um, abuse, spanking, and these types of authoritarian type discipline, whether it's from a teacher or a parent, actually can and has been proven quite resoundingly to lower IQ. Now, someone who had that as a child and feels that put them in a good place, and you're proclaiming, well, I'm smart, I'm working, and my life's been great, but you don't know what could have been. And this isn't to knock anyone. There's actually not going to have the same effects on everyone. Just like anything that might be damaging to your body, uh, if you do studies on that thing, whether it's smoking, alcohol, etc., not everyone's going to have the same effect. So some people might have that happen to them and there's no effect. So just because you as an individual uh, didn't experience negative ramifications from authoritarian discipline doesn't mean that your child or the other childs in your community or whatever you're surrounded with, family member, you see that happening, there's a likelihood that it could negatively affect them. I'm not saying you go out of your way to speak up about it, but uh, depending on how much you value uh, truth and advancing humanity and being a part of the improvement of humanity. And again, I'm not telling people to come up against family in a way that uh, could damage one's relationship with family, but when you live a certain standard within your own life, you can sometimes inadvertently teach others through that. And when it comes to intelligence, we obviously all value that because higher intelligence can denote higher income through life and that makes life easier and that benefits one's own family and the downline of your family as uh, you know you have successive generations. Links number four and five below are number four is the study, number five is actually an excerpt from the study because you have to buy the study if you want to read the full thing um, and there's not even a very succinct summary in the uh, first link but I'm just pu putting that there for the original source but the excerpt is on a blog post and it's from the journal uh, Nature and this really shows the isolation of um, socioeconomic class and how intelligence or IQ can benefit one's lifespan outside of the effects of one's uh, socioeconomic status. So high intelligence child born into a very low income family has a better chance of long life than a low IQ child born into a very rich family. And obviously there's benefits with wealth. Uh, so that would be a separate category, but it's not as big of a factor on determining lifespan as IQ in childhood. And link number five is a British medical journal study. And this isn't actually any additional information, it's just corroborating the conclusion that uh, IQ is a good predictor for lifespan. And what I found quite interesting in link number six, it has a lot of the same conclusions as the study number five, but there was some twin studies involved in this one, and it shows twins that are separated and are in two different homes uh, and especially two different homes that have different things going on. One might be slightly abusive, one might be richer or poorer than the other one, but twins end up having very similar IQs. Um, it can also only delineate by a point or so, but if there's massive things going on like, uh, like I mentioned before, abuse, this is going to obviously detract from it and uh, that will influence IQ in twins, which would normally, uh, in a pristine environment, if they both had the exact same environmental factors, would have no uh, differences between their IQ. So identical twins is what I'm referring to. So this really lends credence to the idea of uh, IQ having a stronger weight in uh, biology as opposed to nature, so the nature versus nurture debate. Uh, different things have different weightings of nature versus nurture. Our personality could be said to be greatly a factor of nurture. And that's an interesting thing because I find people all the time saying, well, that's just the way I am when they're talking about habits and things. Um, so you might have a personality that enjoys certain habits. Um, there might be very root core parts of your personality that are genetic, that are influenced from your parents. But it's pretty clear from people who strive to change themselves and become better people and you know eliminate negative character traits that they might have developed through whatever uh, things growing up, uh, personality is a lot more malleable than things that are more rooted in the physical. IQ is still extremely malleable, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in a, another video in this mini IQ series, uh, but it's more physical than our personality. Uh, your height is 
absolutely physical. Once you reach a certain height, it's next to impossible to gain uh, inches in getting taller. You hear the odd story, but there's no scientifically concluded ways to do that through supplementation once you've finished uh, going through puberty. So if we were to talk about the weighting of like 90% versus 10% of something for whatever trait, and if we're talking about nature versus nurture, IQ I've heard it being talked about being 60% nature, 40% nurture. The twin study might say it's closer to 80 and 20. Something like hair color is obviously going to be like 99%, 1%. And personality might be 10%, 90%. So we have all these different things that we have to take into consideration. It's not black or white. Yes, it is genetic. No, it's not genetic. It's like many things I talk about um, in health. It exists on a spectrum. Uh, this black and white thinking can be quite limiting and when you see a lot of debate around certain topics, whether it's IQ or not, you often see people arguing from the basis of, you know, black versus white, nature versus nurture. And we just need to be realistic about the facts of what the science is telling us at the time and we can utilize that to change things for the better. Nurture is obviously easier to change because it's, you know, not rooted in genetics that are expressing themselves. So anywhere where there's a certain portion of that, even if it's a minor amount, not a ma major amount, in terms of over 50% or more, then there's a place for using lifestyle means of improving our overall standing in that area. So when it comes to IQ, you know, different people have different amounts of it. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to think negatively about. There's a whole wide range of different skills people have, which also influence longevity. Uh, EQ being another one, emotional quotient. If you're a very open-hearted, uh, empathetic person, you're far less likely to get involved in damaging things and things that could harm you. If you're more of a sociopathic, psychopathic, or Machiavellian type personality, that is pretty clear that that attracts some pretty negative things into one's life. So you could have an IQ off the scale, but you know, if you're a politician with this disturbing level of lack of feeling, you're going to be susceptible to uh, having other people around you who behave in that way and could harm you and thus cut your life off short. So we develop things as we need them. IQ is uh, one area I think a lot of people overlook and there's a lot of exciting things coming out that make it possible to address this area in our life. So let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Like, favor, and share the video if you feel so inclined. And with that, I'll talk next time. Take care and embrace life without limits.